Welcome to topic 9 in chemistry. This is going to be about something called stoichiometry. Kind of a fun word to say, stoichiometry. This is the Valentine special and I am your host, Mr. Rast. So let's talk about some stoichiometry here. <clears throat> Before we get um, into it, I'd like to just kind of address uh, what is stoichiometry and what, what's important to, about it? Why should we learn about stoichiometry in the first place? So here's a short little video um, and, and to kind of illustrate the importance of stoichiometry. I'll talk about it in a moment when this is over. In a collision involving a car equipped with airbags, the impact initiates a chemical reaction. Automobile airbags work when a sample of sodium azide detonates, producing nitrogen gas. This gas fills the bag. Using our understanding of the gas laws, we can calculate the quantity of sodium azide required to produce the appropriate amount of nitrogen gas. So the important aspect of this video was when she said the quantity of azide required to produce the nitrogen gas that we need, what we're desiring in the airbag. If we don't calculate this properly, um, we don't put enough azide in there, then when an accident happens, the airbag won't completely fill. It might just partially fill and shoot out of your steering wheel and sit on your lap while your face gets smashed into the steering wheel or the glass or something like that. If we put too much azide in there, then the bag will come out like punching you in the face. It can break your face, break your, um, you know, cause um, break some bones if we put too much azide in there. So what stoichiometry about is about, it's about putting or, or de determining, calculating how much reactants you need to react with each other and how much product you're going to get. So it's all about quantity, quantity about what you're actually going to be um, producing. <laughs> I have a lot of fun sound effects in this one. I got a little carried away in that. that <laughs> oh, I won't, won't make those real long ones again. Anyways, so um, before I get into the stoichiometry, we're going to do a, a little bit of review of things that we should know to this point. So um, you will please um, answer this question. Maybe pause the video and answer this question. What I want you to do is write this reaction in symbols. So there's some prior knowledge of chemistry required to get to this point. So write it in symbols, write an equation for this. When you add solid potassium to water, you produce potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Why don't you pause it and see if you can write this out. And hopefully you did and you gave this a shot. What you should have said uh, is that solid potassium, that would be represented with a K, is um, you add that to water. So water would be H2O and you produce, so you're going to use the yield sign, potassium hydroxide. Hydroxide is a polyatomic anion which is OH negative and potassium when it becomes a cation it is um, positive one so it's K positive. So this since potassium is plus one and hydroxide is negative one it's a one-to-one -one ratio and you should have written it as simply KOH. So hydroxide is negative one and potassium is positive one. So it's a one to one ratio. You don't have any subscripts here. And you produce hydrogen gas. And this is where a lot of people make the mistake. Um, I'm impressed at how many people get this potassium hydroxide correct. But you forget, you have to remember that there's seven diatomic elements. That means that they don't exist in, um, they exist in pairs, they're diatomic. So hydrogen is one of those diatomics. So don't forget to write H2. Okay? Now, that's our equation. Now, once we write the equation, what we've been practicing um, in topic 8 was balancing equations, and that's exactly what I'd like you to do now. Try to balance, <laughs> Try to balance this equation. So don't be afraid to pause the video and you know, give yourself some practice right here. Pause the video and see if you can balance this equation. And uh, hopefully you gave it a try and I'm going to walk through how to do this right now. When I balance equations, I take a look at how many reactants I have. I've got one potassium, 
two hydrogens and one oxygen and on my product side I've got one potassium three hydrogens I've got one two here and another one here and one oxygen so it is not balanced my hydrogens are not balanced I do notice though that when I'm finally done my hydrogen will be an even number because it's going to be a multiple of two to have the same amount of hydrogens on both sides um, because this is H2 the hydrogens will be an even number so I'm gonna make this an even number by putting um, a 2 make this side I'm sorry an even number by putting a 2 in front of this um, that way I've got two hydrogens here and another two here that'll give me four hydrogens but that also changes my potassium and oxygen um, quantities I've got now two potassiums I have four hydrogens I've got two here and another two here that's four hydrogens and two oxygens now I can I did that so I could try to balance this hydrogen out by adding a two in front of the water I have four hydrogens and but that also changed my oxygen to two which um, is kind of convenient because I have two on the other side so that matches the only thing that's not balanced right now is my potassium so um, it's pretty easy fix if I put it if I put a 2 in front of the potassium, I've got 2. So now I have a balanced equation. And this is very important, po important. This is very import important in stoichiometry. We need a balanced equation. Stoichiometry is the relationship, the ratios of a balanced equation. So let's try to do some stoichiometry now. The, what we've done so far was a little bit of review of things that you should know already, but let's do some stoichiometry. We're, a stoichiometry problem would be like this. Determine the number of moles of hydrogen produced when 0 0.0400 moles of potassium is used. So in stoichiometry, we're converting um, how much hydrogen, we're going to convert hydrogen from potassium. So we've got some potassium, and I want to know how much hydrogen is produced. Um, so far to this point in my class, you have been able to convert moles to atoms using Avogadro's number or molecules. You've been able to convert moles to grams using the molar mass on the periodic table. Stoichiometry is converting moles of, of one substance, in this case potassium, into moles of a different substance. In order to do this, you must have a balanced equation. Balanced equations are a lot like recipes when you're cooking. Uh, let's pretend you're making a chocolate chip cookie. Um, you will you are going to have different quantities of things that you're going to need to make the cookie, such as the chocolate chips, the flour, the sugar, etc. Um, and you're going to make a certain amount of cookies if you follow the recipe the way it's written. Um, so stoichiometry is saying, hey, you know what? I don't have what the recipe says, perhaps. I only have this much chocolate chips. I only have... In, in stoichiometry, in chemistry terms, I only have 0 0.0400 moles of potassium. How much hydrogen am I going to get? To read the equation, it says if I had two moles of potassium, I will produce one mole of hydrogen. That's what this balanced equation is saying. So the relationship is a what? two to one ratio. I've got two potassiums for every one hydrogen. So it's a two to one ratio. And I set it up as a fraction so that we get used to, we're comfortable with dimensional analysis, which we're going to use to convert here. So this part's important. What is the relationship here? And this isn't just potassium and hydrogen. There's a two to two ratio of potassium to water. There's a two to two ratio from potassium to potassium hydroxide. There's a two to one ratio for water and hydrogen. You can look at the ratio for anything you want in here. Um, you're just going to answer what the question's asking. All right. Um, so to do this, we're going to do what we've been doing since the first topic. If you're uncomfortable with that, go back to the first topic and look at dimensional analysis again. Um, but we should hopefully be comfortable with this at this point in chemistry. So what we do with dimensional analysis is we start the problem off with what's given in the question. So I've got 0 0.0400 moles of potassium. That's what I'm going to start off with. And I'm going to use equivalences to convert out of one thing into what I want to convert into. And so I'm going to convert out of potassium into hydrogen. So therefore, I'm going to put this fraction here, and I could put the hydrogen as my denominator, or I could put the potassium as my denominator. 
I always use, I always, when I'm using dimensional analysis, I'm always setting it up to cancel. So since I have potassium that I'm starting with, I'm going to put potassium as the denominator. Remember, I'm always setting up to cancel. The units cancel each other out. And then whatever it is the equivalent goes on top. And, and what's good here is uh, I want moles of hydrogen on top. And so that's what I have. So if I take 0 0.0400 divided by 2, I will have this answer in moles of hydrogen, which is exactly what we wanted to do here. So that would be the answer. This is stoichiometry right here. This is all stoichiometry is. It's using a balanced equation to convert from one thing into another thing. That's the stoichiometry. What makes stoichiometry difficult for students is getting it to the situation of this. This is a mole-to-mole -mole relationship. I cannot stress right now, this is the most important part of what my lesson is today. This is a mole-to-mole -mole relationship. Two moles of potassium will produce one mole of hydrogen. This is not, pay attention, this is not a mass-to-mass -mass relationship. This does not say that two grams of potassium will create one gram of hydrogen. It is a molar relationship. Very, very, very important that you understand what I just said because we will measure things out in grams. But you can't do this in grams. So you would have to convert the grams of potassium into moles of potassium. That's when stoichiometry takes place. And we have practiced converting grams to moles. And then we have our answer in moles. But I need my answer in grams. I want, you know, eventually we're going to be answering things in grams. So you're going to have to take this moles of hydrogen and convert it into grams of hydrogen, which we practiced with. So if you're a little shaky on converting grams to moles and moles to grams, please go back and review topic eight, topic eight, and that will strengthen you up on that. Okay, so let's do a practice problem with stoichiometry. Um, here's a good question that I might ask something like this on a test or a quiz. Determine the mass of sodium chloride or table salt produced when 1.25 moles of chlorine gas reacts vigorously with sodium. This is a very, very violent reaction. It's very exothermic, very bright. When you take sodium metal, re uh, react it with chlorine gas and make sodium chloride. So again, we're converting moles of chlorine gas and we're going to convert this into um, sodium chloride. So in order to do this, we need to have a balanced equation. So we got to take these words and turn it into an equation. One. And there's our little Valentine heart. Um, so analyzing the problem here, um, before we even figure out that I needed to convert um, moles of chlorine into grams of sodium chloride, uh, analyze the question and take a look at here. What What is the question asking and what are we solving for here? So again, we are asking, or we're given moles of chlorine gas and we're solving for grams of sodium chloride. Grams, make sure that you understand that part. The mass of sodium chloride. Very, very important. And we'll talk about that. Two. All right, we've got um, the equation written out here that we have a sodium metal reacting with chlorine gas. And don't forget that chlorine gas is one of your seven diatomic elements and it produces sodium chloride salt sodium chloride salt. Remember sodium is plus one charge and chlorine is a negative one charge when they become ions so it's just a one-to-one -one ratio so there's no subscripts needed in sodium chloride. Now to balance this I see that I've got two chlorines here so I'm gonna have to have twice as much over here but that will also increase my sodium so I'm gonna probably put a two over here. So let's balance this. I'd have to say two sodiums and two sodium chlorides. It's always good to pause the video and just practice this stuff with yourself for yourself. So now that we have a balanced equation, we can write the mole ratio between the sodium chloride and the chlorine. So, wow. <laughs> so we have for every 2 moles of sodium chloride produced, it requires 1 mole of chlorine. This mole ratio is what's needed for stoichiometry. Again, this is the stoichiometry part of a question. So now we have a balanced equation and we have our mole ratio. Let's convert 1.25 moles of chlorine into sodium chloride. 
we make sure we using dimensional analysis that we always put what we start with that's what we start with and we always put what we start with the units as the denominator not the numerator so we have that and then our equivalence will be on top whatever the equivalence is and it happens to be two moles of sodium chloride so 1.25 um, times 2 wow. is 2.50 moles of sodium chloride now sometimes stoichiometry problems are more difficult when they are multiple choice tests than they are free response because in free response you just keep working till you get there on a multiple choice test you might have 2.50 moles of, uh, might not say moles but you might have 2.5 um, as an answer and in your calculator you have this right here and you're thinking oh I'm done but you got to remember what the question asked the question asked for the mass of sodium chloride not the moles of sodium chloride so just because your calculator has something that matches your multiple choice test don't stop short and um, put the wrong answer so you got to do one more step convert grams to moles we practice this in topic 8 a lot so hopefully you are comfortable with this um, to convert 2.5 moles of sodium chloride into grams you're gonna need the molar mass of sodium chloride the molar mass of sodium chloride is found on the periodic table by taking one sodium and adding one chlorine together so you take um, and, and again this is just dimensional analysis again 1.25 moles of um, I'm sorry 2.50 moles of sodium chloride that was our answer from the last question we're going to convert that into grams and the molar mass on the periodic table of a sodium plus a chlorine is 58.44 grams the moles cancel out and now we've converted to grams and we have um, at least by my calculations I have 146 grams of sodium chloride my question had three significant figures in it so I'm answering with three significant figures and that would be the answer to this question we've got some practice problems for you um, that will get progressively more and more difficult don't stop the video here and quit there are five questions this is just the first three so pause the video and try to solve these first three they get progressively more and more challenging the first one I've given you a balanced equation so number one you have a balanced equation and you're gonna have to convert 3.21 moles of calcium hydroxide that's this one into moles of water which is this one here the second question I did not balance the equation you have to balance this one and then do your conversion your stoichiometry and the third one is even more difficult in that um, you have to write the equation you have to read this and see if you can write the equation properly and then balance it so we're putting a lot of skills that we've um, learned throughout the year all together right right on here so that's your first three number four is um, challenging in that I'm asking you and I have I gave you a balance equation in number four but I'm asking you to convert moles of titanium for oxide that's this one here into the mass of chlorine into the mass so how much chlorine would be needed to react all of the titanium um, for oxide remember mass so once you get your answer you're gonna to have to convert your answer into grams so this one's a two-step math problem and number five is the most challenging of them all you're gonna to have to write the equation you're gonna to have to balance the equation then you're gonna to have to convert moles of sodium chloride into um, grams of chlorine gas so you're gonna have you have a lot to do here so number five is really what you want to strive to be able to do at this point in class you need to be able to be able to handle everything that number five is throwing at you all right have a, a great day I hope you will have or have had a fantastic Valentine's Day and we will um, uh, I, and I will talk to you soon if you have any questions that you still struggling with after watching the video please just jot that down and talk to me about it I'm finding students that do that are having a lot of success this year so I will see you guys soon bye